Hello, I'm Andrew Tsao. In this episode of Backstory, we're going to see The Blank Canvas, Hip Hop's Struggle for Representation in Seattle. This documentary delves deep into the real story of underground hip hop in Seattle, the history, the culture, and the political struggles behind it. And with us today is the filmmaker and my friend, Rafael Flores. Rafael, thanks for coming back to Backstory oh, for my us. my pleasure. Thank Good you. Good to so see you again. It's been a couple years. Right, likewise. And, um, Let's take a look at the last couple of years since we talked. Uh, a lot has happened with the hip hop culture in Seattle, and I'm going to use Macklemore as a way to get it, get us started. I mean, we're talking about an independent, non-label, uh, loyal Seattle artist who has blown up internationally, which must be transformative to the scene. What's your take on that? You know, I, I think that Macklemore definitely, I mean, congratulations first off to yeah. him. I think what he's been able to achieve is very rare amongst in, independent artists, period. And yeah. I think that everybody recognizes his lyrical talent. Um, I think that the scene is still struggling, though. I think that similar to the way that Sir Mix a lot had his success um, with the various songs that he came out, which were very patriotic to the actual region, yes. I feel that. You know, we have to capitalize on this moment and okay. help everybody in the scene really reach that national stage. And that's the reason why I returned back to Seattle to mm -hmm. complete the films, because mm -hmm. I felt there was an obligation to support the scene and the culture that first inspired me to become an artist. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel that the Blank Canvas is an amazing platform where the artists can actually communicate their opinions directly to the public. Yeah. So I, I just try to help draw those conversations together in the film. And so the film was initially inspired um, just me picking up a camera and going yeah. out and collecting stories and trying to document the social landscape of all these amazing poets, MCs, dancers, and graffiti artists yeah. and all types of artists that were for some reason not being recognized outside of Seattle. Right. And so I really wanted to share that with folks in California and all across the nation because some of my other films have been able to reach other yeah. countries and other uh, networks and markets. And I wanted to do the same thing with this film as well. So making the film not only creates a wider audience for hip hop in Seattle, but you're also saying the making of the film itself brought the community together to talk about something that might otherwise just kind of be left to, it, uh, to its own devices. You're out there saying, let's talk about what that community is. Let's talk about the evolution of it. Let's talk about what's happened in the past and what's happening now. Right. So in that way, filmmaking becomes not only about communication, but about community. Absolutely, it's about community filmmaking. And that's a model that I've adopted in pretty much the majority of most of my films that I've produced. Yeah. And it's a way of community engagement and really addressing social issues and trying to have some policies changed in the various cities and regions that sometimes limit expression or don't necessarily provide opportunities for artists to earn livable wages yeah. um, in order to support their families. Well, let's talk about that for a second because mm -hmm. a lot of your work has been about getting media and technology and skills into the hands. Mm -hmm. For example, you're in the Bay Area now and you're working with youth and training them into mm -hmm. in documentary filmmaking, storytelling, and uh, film technique. And mm -hmm. so really, it's not just you, the filmmaker, but it's yeah. you, the the community activists trying to build community right. through film. Right, absolutely. I mean, that was the foundation of most of my theory here at the University of Washington, and the same thing that I continued over at San Francisco State for my master's program, and really trying to educate the youth. I mean, that is really what the uh, other options yeah. that the artists have, other than actually going the commercial route yeah. or going into academia, but actually the activist route and trying to partner with nonprofits, private companies, and academia to really create this youth media revolution. And yeah. so I've actually uh, am the uh, subject of some TED Talks, actually, that are okay. going to be happening in the Bay Area, talking precisely about this. And also, um, it's a recent subject of some of my upcoming publications as well, has been mm -hmm. community health practice and mm -hmm. how can we use health or how can we use media and social media to build healthy communities? Yeah, I mean, we talked a little bit about how one of the specific things with the emergence of someone like Macklemore has been that it has not been through the traditional model. Mm -hmm. It's not the label-based thing. Right. It's from artist to the, uh, the listener right away. Do you think that film can, can follow that model as well, that it doesn't always have to go through the commercial distribution channels, that it can reach right to its audience from the filmmaker directly? And if so, how do you do that? Right, how do right. you build that? Right. I mean, I think it's an interesting subject right now. You know, on the cover of Billboard magazine right now, you have Jay-Z 
talking about his deal that he just created with Samsung, where they're cutting the label completely out and they're going to, the corporations are going directly to the artists. And so the first million copies of Jay-Z's album will actually be released on Samsung. And so it's, so Samsung's not acting as a label at all. They're well, just literally distributing right. Jay-Z's product. Right, right. And so Samsung is becoming a media platform, but at the same time, you see a split, right? You see this corporate strategy, but at the same time, you see this independent grassroots yeah, strategy, yeah. which is kind of uh, YouTube, yeah. um, the, all the indie film outlets, you v know, Vimeo, Vimeo, the whole thing now. Exactly, and so the it's these outlets are becoming so much more important for independent filmmakers in order to provide an option if they can't get that commercial route. Right. And so this is the only way that you've been able to actually reach an international market. So similar to the way that Samsung is doing it with their various media platforms they plan on coming out with, independent artists, especially some that I work with in Green Eyed Media, yeah. we've created our own technology to integrate business strategies and platforms into the online websites where we cross-pollinate and cross-promote each other's work and reach the largest audience and network as possible. And that's precisely what the Blank Canvas is all about. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. about everybody helping promote each other. Yeah. And that's the reason why we released the soundtrack as well. Right. So speaking of cross-promotion and this idea, I mean, it's so fascinating to me that the way you're thinking and the way you're telling me hip-hop culture helps people think is, you know, you don't have to be in somebody else's niche. You've got dance, you've got art, you've got music, you've got film, you've got video, you've got transmedia, you've got social media. And the mixing and blending of this stuff is really what is exciting to see. Is it hip hop culture that causes this to happen or is it the necessities of how those messages have to get out that makes hip hop culture so broad? Right. I mean, I would say that hip hop culture, you know, has many facets in the way that it was first invented and created yeah. in, in New York. Right. Yeah. And so that's why you have dance and every type of art form from b-boying to graffiti artists to even now what I'm proposing in this film is filmmaking That's as well. what I'm getting at is and, you're looking at it and saying right. filmmaking and the style of filmmaking as an offshoot right. of hip-hop culture right is another right. avenue. So, so the same way that hip-hop culture can bridge so many different art forms is the same way that cinema and the cinematic medium can mm -hmm. actually bridge so many different forms of uh, art forms as well. Mm -hmm. And so likewise, the film Blank Canvas is a multitude of diverse voices, and so the film also bridges so many different diverse voices as well. So it's, it's, an, it's a strategy that is allowing me to fit the form with the content. Yes. And so vi several visual motifs were actually developed in the film to express that. Can you talk about a couple of those? Yeah, well, one thing I think is your mix of your mix of look, mm -hmm. uh, your camera angles, and your cutting style. Mm -hmm. What else? Well, you know, I mean, first off, I always start with every documentary film production. I always think about the seven modes of documentary representation. Please. Right. And this, there's various different ones that were coined by a famous uh, professor named Bill Nichols. Mm -hmm. And in this film in particular, well, in most of the films that I create, I try to blur the boundaries between these different modes of documentary representation okay. in order to elevate the form of art to another level. Right. And so one of those, uh, the four that I actually adopted in this particular film was the journalistic style. Yes the participatory style, yeah. the poetic style, and the experimental style. Okay, explain to me real quick what you mean by participatory style. Right, so the particip participatory style is similar to a Michael Moore documentary where the filmmaker takes the audience on the journey and actively investigates and creates uh, a story. And that's why the, in the film right. you say things like, we were going to do this, but on that day we ended up going here, and here's right. what happened. Right. And, and I, that's part of your journey in making the film. Right. And then I always think that in general, most of the films, the story of making the film is usually more interesting than the actual topic itself. Mm -hmm. And so that was the reason why it was so important to bring folks like Santonio Bandanas yeah. and other people into the actual production of the film, because yeah. it was a way for us to show the process of community building. So this kind of filmmaking you're saying is also uniquely collaborative in and of itself. Absolutely. It's different from the old model of I'm the director, you're the subject, here we go. I mean, it's, as a matter of fact, you, the audience uh, will see that right at the top of the film, it is said to you, listen, come here, do this, I will show you, I will help be your guide through what's going on, and that was part of your way in to getting this film made. Absolutely. And it was essential. Mm -hmm. and, and also you have a trust level with the community and you're someone that has 
you know, a profile there. So obviously it gives you a different entree. When you're out there shooting though, are you just thinking about, let me get as much as I can and make it in the editing room? Or are you thinking already in terms of the, mm -hmm. the forms and the sort of styles you're trying to put together? Right, so as a documentary filmmaker, you know, usually the most important thing that you prepare yourself for going out into the field is your questions. Yeah. You gotta have some structure. And pretty much, I would say 90% of the folks that I interviewed for it were like, those are some good questions. <laughs> sure. And so, and you naturally, as you're doing research for any documentary before you create your outline, you see those uh, issues emerge naturally okay. out of the conversations that you have. And so every time that I was interviewing somebody, a new issue might have come up and I would add those to my question and right. I would keep on going. And folks would be like, Daddy, you know what? That is true. You know, I, let me talk to and them about that. And then it spirals into something else. Right. That's, that's right. fantastic. Right. Um, we're going to take a short break right here and we'll be right back. Right now we're going to watch The Blank Canvas. And be sure to stay with us afterward because we're going to hear more from filmmaker Rafael Flores. We'll be back in a minute to talk with filmmaker Rafael Flores. Stay with us. Welcome back. Now joining us is one of the producers of The Blank Canvas, Santonio Bandanas. Santonio, welcome to Backstory. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. So at the top of the film, in Raphael's narration, he says, you were the one who called him and said, you got to come back up here. You got to finish this film. Something's happening in the Seattle hip hop community. What's happening? Well, you know, it's a microcosm of a macrocosm, you know, like there is always movement in the arts community. And as we were discussing earlier, you know, the imagination mm. is what drives people and draws them into the arts mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. into all of the different ways that it can be utilized, mm. both scholastically uh, for community building, for just really giving people basic life skills to help them have a future or see a future or even realize that their voice matters. So for my community that I come from since 1993, mm. the Central District of Seattle on the South End, back in the Sunflower uh, Apartments in the 602s, now called the Kingways, mm. um, it's really, all about making sure that there is some sort of documentation, okay. some sort of uh, your voice does matter. Okay. You know, as as a you know the hip hop origi origination story. Yeah. You yeah. know, you come from somebody that has nothing, and they feel like their voice has no meaning or it doesn't matter, and they get down on themselves. Depression yeah. ensues. They we're already in a recession. So I think that the best thing that I could do to give back to the community that gave me so much yeah. upon making the decision to continuously create music and yeah. convince people um, in a product which was a part of all of us together yeah. that helped create the feeling and the mode and the things that I was even talking about. And the epistemic normative is, you know, we overlook where we get to once we get onto a pedestal. So Blank Canvas is not just a record of a time, but it's also a way to ennoble and empower the artists in the community through seeing themselves. Seeing themselves and allowing other people to see them as well. Right, right. right. Is there a different level of recognition now with Seattle hip hop than there was say five, 10 years ago? And in what way? I mean, we're talking about sort of the national landscape and a lot of what's right. talked about in the film right. is there was always sort of this sort of I think the phrase was Seattle's the weirdos right I think that's a, yeah, 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 the yeah, quote yeah. in there are you guys still the weirdos well we're always gonna be <laughs> the the point being though is that's what makes it fresh okay it's right. we're not trying to follow suit and right. jump on bandwagons like there's always been a very strong artist presence here since the jazz era uh -huh. since the you know blues and the rock yeah every time there has been any sort of creative burst mm. you know like we cannot just quell and pretend that it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't just like, oh, there's mix a lot, then nothing, and then all of a sudden this blew up. It's there a continuum that's always right. evolving, always changing, evolving and morphing. And, changing. and one thing that I would add to that is, you know, uh, down in the Bay Area, you know, I've been able to construct a bridge through various projects from Seattle all the way to California, all the way down the West Coast, yeah. down to Los Angeles, and that's part of the Green Eyed Media strategy and network. Yeah. And I've had somebody come up to me in Oakland and said, you made the blank, blank canvas? Yeah. It gives me a huge hug and says thank you for sharing this and opening my eyes to so many other types of forms of music and culture that I had never known about. And I have uh, record labels actually saying, 
wow, you know, like I only watched this to see Macklemore, but I had no idea that there was folks like Black Stacks or yeah. Laura Peace Kelly or Vitamin D right. who influenced Macklemore, actually, right, 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 who right. we all talk about in the film as well. That is the most important part. Is to see the source, the legacy, the lineage, if you right. will, of what it all means. Right. It's not just individuals standing up and appearing out of nowhere. Right. People come from a background and a community. Exactly. And just like hip hop was always meant to create and foster a sense of community, yeah. this film is also taking that same approach. Yeah. And that is ultimately what the objective was of producing the film. Now, now let's just talk about a real quick second about this idea that, you know, we we now know like with music, uh, you can create your work and bring it directly to your audience without a label, right? right. Film, independent film, documentary film, in that world, obviously hip hop film is going to want to work that way. How does it do it? Where does it go? Genuine, by being genuine. You know, like when you start, um, I don't know, the term that is very frequently used is going Hollywood. Okay. You know, and like really just placating to other people's designs and desires and venturing away from your originality and, you know, what makes you the artist and the filmmaker that people actually care about because they see you being a part of the community. So you're saying stay independent. Well, stay independent and start your own business. Yeah. You don't start a business to not have it do any good so you know if you start your own business you're going to want it to be able to flourish and yeah. prosper and be continuous and feed itself what, what i tell my students is and they come into my studios every day yeah. wanting to get signed to a label what i tell them is i break it down if you look at the statistics you're actually as an independent artist going to make twice as much in royalties if you're not signed to a label because right. you own your music because right. you own your music and the thing is is that you look at macmore how did he sell so much well it was through itunes and mm -hmm. there are certain programs in these corporations these corporations are under understanding that and trying to take a little cut now and they're offering programs like universal distribution programs and things like that as well so is maybe out there there's a, a model like this for film maybe there's because right now YouTube Vimeo people click on there but maybe there's a way you say you know uh, adult buck 29 you know you you get to view blank canvas a certain number of times 29 cents for a short film 83 cents for a you know, there's, it's so that it's like that iTunes model, but more variable. That w is a good w suggestion. www.greeneyedmedia.com because that is the model, and that's mm -hmm. what we've been doing for a long time now. You get your PayPal card, you can buy, stream direct, you yeah. can get a digital download, or you can get a DVD, and that is international. And I think yeah. that's going to be the, the way this works in terms of film. Well, you don't You don't go through the distributor, you go... If someone likes it, they click on it, they got it. I mean, we know it worked with iTunes, right? right, right People right. thought that was crazy in the beginning. They were like, no one's going to download a song for 99 cents. Hello. All right. Right? Yeah. yeah. So let's mm. talk a little bit about how the musicians, the artists, the community, what you would say now to them to seize this moment. Right. What, what would you wish to have happen now well, with all these changes going on? I would wish that, uh, I don't know, I guess personally it would just be to have everybody supporting everybody. Okay. You know, like, you when, when you have something like a community business or like a small mom and pop store, the thing that keeps it moving, that keeps it there in that community, in that neighborhood, the thing that keeps the neighborhood the neighborhood is everybody supporting everybody's business. Yeah. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. The back scratching has already ensued. I handed people back scratchers. I gave them phone calls and emails. Work with what we have. So just like the movement to say buy local in terms of produce and everything like that, buy local art. Exactly. Buy local culture. Exactly. Go down and see what's going on right down in your own in your own city in and contribute to the local right. scene. Mm -hmm. And that's a really important point, and that's something that I learned from Centonio actually in the process of making this film was it's not just about social media because you could be the most amazing artist in the world, yeah. but if you're not out there interfacing with the community, yeah. you're really nobody. Yeah. I hear you talking about a place, but where are where you from? Where are you from? from? Right? That's really exactly. good. Exactly. So since we're talking about the future, we're going to bring in a special guest right now. Mm -hmm. We have in the studio Santonio's son, Zaim. And we're going to have him come on in. Come on in, Zaim. Yeah. Because right now you are seeing the future. You're going to meet him for a second. How are you doing today? Good. Yeah? So, I don't know. Zaim, what do you say? What, what, Santoni, what do you say to Zaim about all this sense of buying back to the community? How do you raise a son with this sensibility of being loyal to community, to 
to understanding the culture and embracing it and, and maintaining it? Well, I just try and bring him to like Zulu Nation shows, okay. like all ages shows that really promote community building and youth empowerment through using the art forms as platforms. And again, it's just like the model of the filmmaking that is the Zulu Nation model, like community in action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brings, the, brings the world together. I mean, when they, th they said it was a fad, yeah, yeah. it changed the world. So Zayim, what for you is your favorite thing about hip hop? I mostly like the break dancing. Okay. I do it myself. Yeah. Now, do you have uh, forgive me, what do they call it when everybody gets together to Cyphers. cipher? Do you go to ciphers? Yeah. Do, are, is everyone at the cipher your age or are they all different ages? Different, mostly. And so are you intimidated by the older kids or no, you just go out there and work? And just go out there. That's a pretty good attitude to have, mm -hmm. I think, right? It's great to have you and it's great to meet you. This is just great to have all of you on this show. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching Backstory. I'm Andrew Tsao, and I'll see you again behind the scenes. Yeah, absolutely. Buy local, right? Buy local.